Morning San Antonio starts right now. Coming up, the president's acquittal and why one Republican senator voted to kick the president out of office. I'm Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill. Outside with live cam, it's cold. We do that. Some of you are going to wake up, look outside this morning, look on the uh, car or truck, maybe the front porch or back porch, and see a little bit of leftover sleet or maybe something else. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is February 6th. I woke up to seven videos from my family of just a snowstorm blizzard at our house. A snowstorm blizzard? Really? I'm going to show you the video. Was it like, wasn't sleet, happening? it was snowflakes? It looked like snow. And okay. sleet. It was snow. a mixture. There was, there was snow, there was sleet, uh, a little bit video. of kind of that uh, groppy type stuff mixed in. Yeah, yeah. All so we had area. a little bit of everything. Well, we slept through all that, didn't I, we? Yeah, I was yeah. like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. There was that, that little glitch of a disturbance that moved through last night. There was a, enough cold air and enough leftover moisture and just squeezed it out. Just, you know, quick little gee whiz kind of thing. Set a record in Austin. Really? A trace. Uh, okay. A trace of? A trace of snow. Snow. Okay. That was That was the record for uh, yesterday. And so. then the moon came out overnight? And yeah, it clears, guys. So, you know, I had a uh, text from uh, somebody one of the local schools said, is this going to affect, it? you know, no kids. You got school today. It's not going to affect anything out there because here is the moon setting. It is just a couple of days uh, away from being officially full. But, boy, that is beautiful out there. And tell you one thing, though, skies cleared out and it's cold outside. 33. These are the actual air temperatures right now. 29 in Lotus, 31 in Ball Verde, freezing at Randolph and mid 20s in parts of the hill country. And we still have a breeze. And so Lost Maples feels like 16, 25 at the airport and uh, 25 also at Port SA. So definitely, needless to say, bundle up this morning. We are going to have plenty of sunshine today. It's going to be a gorgeous day. Wind is out of the uh, north to northwest about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And wind's not going to be a huge ordeal today. Uh, everything is on the, the high side. And we're going to have temperatures. I think we may actually drop down another couple of degrees. That's very dependent upon the wind. Slackens up a little bit. We'll drop down a little bit more. I'm going for 30 right now. And of course, you know, think back. We did not hit freezing in the entire month of January for only about the fifth time. Uh, in, in history. And then later on today, like I said, good looking day, but it is still going to be cool, cold, 55, about 10 below normal. Another cold morning tomorrow, not quite as cold. And then the big warm up begins. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Thursday morning. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great start to your morning. Well, when I came in, there was one accident on the screen, but it's since cleared up, so no accidents right now. Always good news. Take a look at some drive times. If you're on 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, 17 minutes. And if you're on 35 southbound from Loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Great times there. Let's take a look at the trans guide outside 37 in South Cross looking very good right now. 281 in the quarry. Not that many cars there. And let's do one more here. We have I tenant Hebner traffic is also looking light. So good news for everyone. Mark Leslie back to you. Thank you, Nick. Breaking news this morning. A man asleep in bed is shot several times through his apartment window. All this happening in the no on the northeast side near Wurzbach Parkway in the 11,000 block of Roselle Street. Sarah Coast is live at the scene with the latest. Sarah. Good morning, and police are still here on scene collecting evidence after that man was shot while he was asleep. You can see that there are several police units behind me. That apartment that was shot up, you can see that crime scene still up. To give you a better idea of where we are, these apartments are part of, these are Saha Apartments, San Antonio Housing Association Apartments, called the LC Rutledge Apartments. What we know so far, Police were called out just before three this morning when a suspect fired several shots into one of the apartment windows. The victim was asleep in bed, woke up to getting shot several times. The victim, a man, was taken to Samsey in critical condition. According to police, police say the suspect fled and they are checking neighbors cameras to investigate any clues to give them a better idea of who this person could have been, if it was one person or more than one person, um, what kind of vehicle they're in. So they're using that video surveillance cameras from next door neighbors as evidence. Live from the Northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. In your morning headlines, the impeachment trial over. President Trump will stay in office as president beating both articles of impeachment. But his victory did have an unexpected turn when Republican Senator Mitt Romney broke party ranks and voted to remove Trump from office. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details.
The president won. The office of the president won. The Constitution won. The deeply divisive trial to remove the president from office ends in acquittal. We always knew it was an uphill fight. No one had illusions that the president would be convicted. President Trump and his team coming out on top, but Trump was tripped up on his way to triumph. Mr. Romney. Guilty. Mr. Romney, guilty. A historic vote from Republican Senator Mitt Romney, now becoming the first senator in U.S. history to vote in favor of removing a president from his own party. What he did was not perfect. No, it was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security, and our fundamental values. In an emotional speech, Romney saying his faith guided his decision and he believed the evidence was clear. Trump pressured Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden for political gain. The blowback, swift and relentless. The president's son even calling for Romney to be expelled from the party. He's not brave. He's a coward. The president ripping Romney on Twitter into the night. Had failed presidential candidate Mitt Romney devoted the same energy and anger to defeating a faltering Barack Obama as he sanctimoniously does to me, he could have won the election. And across the nation, Don't Trump! Don't Trump! small but vocal protests popping up from coast to coast. And the Romney response aside, the president is expected to make an official statement about impeachment sometime this afternoon. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Today is the deadline for Democratic presidential candidates to qualify for the upcoming debate in New Hampshire. Qualifications include polling and donations thresholds. So far, seven candidates have qualified for the debate, which is happening tomorrow night. New Hampshire primary is coming up Tuesday. Two more planes with evacuated Americans from China are expected to arrive in the United States today. All passengers will be quarantined for 14 days at military bases in Nebraska and JBSA Lackland here in San Antonio. There are at least a dozen confirmed cases in the United States. The death toll in China has risen to 563 and more than 28,000 are infected globally. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo was established back in 1949, and with time, it's become one of the most anticipated events in the city with over 2 million visitors each and every year. It's a big deal. Alicia Badetta is already at the rodeo grounds this morning. She's going to take us along with some of the new things that you can experience this year, and you look ready to go. I am ready to rodeo. Good morning, you guys. Well, right now I'm in the swine bar and things are calm right now. Um, just want to take a uh, look over there to my left, y'all's right. Uh, that's where the competition is going to be happening here at the swine bar. But actually, we have someone who woke up way earlier than I did. My alarm clock went off at 2.40 this morning. He was up as of 1, 2 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. I was. This is Caleb Cruzy. He's from Fredericksburg, and you're competing with how many pigs? Uh, four, two for my sister and two for me. All right, and so tell us how early he goes to school. You're in high school? Yes, ma'am, I'm doing it. And he wakes up early and gives himself some time. So walk us through that. In the mornings, what time do you wake up and how much time do you have to give yourself to feed the pigs? I wake up around 6 in the morning. I go down, feed the pigs, get to the house around 6.30, take a shower, feed breakfast, and head to school. All that because he's here today and he's competing and he's hoping to win some scholarship money. We're going to take you around, right, Caleb? Yes, so you can see the pigs. Um, he hasn't named all of them, only one. And the first one is Cray Cray. That is his name. <laughs> Um, and so this one right here that you're looking at, I believe this one was born July 1st, right? Yes, ma'am. And then we have, um, so these weigh over 300 pounds. And just with your hands, can you show us how little they were just about six months ago? Look, that big. Tiny, yes. tiny, tiny little things. All right, so um, to get prepared, what are you going to do today? We're going to wash them, clean them up, make sure they look good and filled. So we're going to go around it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Caleb. We wish you the best of luck. And again, the big draw uh, for these students is that scholarship money. They're hoping to win and win big. Back to you guys. Love the hat. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. And the reason she's out there today, rodeo kicks off today. Today. 439, 33 degrees. Still ahead, new surveillance video is raising questions about the behavior of an Idaho mother who missed a deadline to prove her kids are safe. And next, the Spurs trying to get their first win on this year's Rodeo Road Trip. We'll have a preview of their matchup with the Trailblazers in Portland. And Live Cam giving us a peek outside. 
you didn't get to see it, you probably don't have any leftover residuals of the snow and ice. Maybe a couple of places and a couple of trees. I didn't see any. It was all over my back porch and all was over it? my truck this morning. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice little thing. But hey, it's going to start warming up again. Mike has details. Forty-two. Welcome back and good morning. Our San Antonio Spurs struggling to start their 18th rodeo road trip by going 0-2 so far against the Clippers and the Lakers. Now, in order to finish just 500 for the season, the Spurs would have to go 19 and 13 in their final 32 games. The streak of 22 straight playoff runs now very much in jeopardy. Next game tonight against the Portland Trailblazers That's starting at 9 o'clock our time at the Moda Center in Portland. And we have the um, soapbox for David Sears on standby for the debrief tomorrow at 9. Our sad little soapbox, 443, 33 degrees. Preparations are officially underway for the Oscars this weekend, and we have a preview of what movies are expected to take home awards. San Antonio Book Festival, not too far away. We'll have what you need to know about this community event that is free and open to the public. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now is 446. Well, it's been one week since an Idaho mother missed a deadline to prove her children are safe. Now, new surveillance video is raising questions about her behavior around the time they disappeared. ABC's Will Reeve has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, where are the children? Can you tell me where your kids are? <laughs> where are your kids? Yep, um it's been one week since Lori Vallow ignored a deadline to physically produce her children, failing to bring 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old JJ to authorities. Ever since she's been involved in this doomsday uh, cult, that is not the same Lori that we knew for 13 years. Vallow's oldest son, Colby, still pleading with his mom for answers about his siblings. I feel like my mom would die for the kids. So to see this and hear it and also be questioning why they're not being found, that's where all this comes into like a battle between what you think and what you feel. So could the couple be arrested? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Now to a KSAC community event happening in April, the San Antonio Book Festival. The event will take place at the Central Library in the Southwest School of Art. On April 4th, it is free and open to the public. The literary director for the book festival says it's a chance for people to learn about new ideas and hear some of the best writers talk about things that they're passionate about. So we're really working on um, increasing literacy in the city and, and we love doing that. Festival will feature local authors as well as authors from all across the nation. There'll be a variety of writers ranging from children's picture books to adult books. That's a good thing to do. Let's check traffic at 448. Officer Nick Solis, how's it looking on the roadways? Things are looking great right now, Leslie. No accidents to report at this time. So let's take a look at the trans guide. Let's see outside. If you're on 35 and Ben Zingelman, traffic's starting to pick up just a little bit there, but not too bad. 35 and 37, just about the same. Things are looking very smooth out there. 35 and Evans as well is looking very good. And uh, let's see, 35 and Loop 410 over there on the northeast side is uh, looking great. And let's do one. One more 35 and 37 traffic is looking very light which is good news for everyone thank you nick solis yeah no problem mark austin so it is a just a gee whiz thing but people are posting all about I, it it was fun well i mean because it is a rarity mm -hmm. obviously for us to see snow around here but you know think back to yesterday we had cold temperatures in the morning and a little bit of rain and there was some stuff out in northwest parts of the way out west of the hill country and then by the afternoon mm -hmm. we did get some sunshine all of a sudden, the clouds started to move in. There was just that little disturbance that slid through here, enough to just cause some Make that it stuff. happen. Yeah. Want to hear the smartest thing I did all morning? I accidentally hit the wipers. Yeah. So now it was an instant <laughs> glaze on my windshield this morning. It smeared all over it. I had to wait oh, for the defroster yeah, to kick that in. that wasn't so smart. Yeah, you figure a guy from the East Coast would know better. Yeah, but, but you've lived here a long time. <laughs> yeah. So. I did the same thing, Mark. Rest. Yeah. Did you really? <laughs> it's like, oh. Some of it was snow. Some of it was a little sleet or even a little bit of grapple, which is basically just you take a snowflake and you have water freezing around and it's kind of a mushy little it's sleet. Like Nature's like, dip and dots. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. The best way to describe that's it. That's really. Old, you yeah, didn't know it was German for sleet. I didn't know that. 
Anyway, great picture though. And yeah, it looks like somebody spilled dipping dots on this chair out there. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. It wasn't a big area that saw any of this wintry precipitation. And, uh, you know, it's all pretty much melted off, but it's kind of neat to see. And there's the moon, which is just about to set. It's just a couple of days away from being full. It's going to be full on the 9th. 33 here in town, freezing uh, Randolph and then freezing temperatures uh, almost everywhere. Even Pleasanton is at 29 as of right now. And then it's the wind chill because we still have a pretty good breeze out there this morning. Uh, we've got wind chills in the mid to lower 20s and even teens out there and temperatures around the area. Very few exceptions. Most everybody is uh, at or below freezing right now. We've got these uh, winds out of the north to northwest at about five to 10 miles per hour. Not overly windy, but you know, with this cold of temperature, it doesn't take much to put those wind chills down there. So this the cloud cover we had yesterday and then upstairs in the atmosphere as things dry out, maybe a little bit of uh, some moisture aloft in the atmosphere, but you know, milky shade of the sky. Otherwise, we're going to have plenty of sunshine today. So here's what's going on and looking back in time. And as we, you know, just had that one little little glitch move on through here and it didn't last very long, but just enough to produce some of that uh, light snow sleet and a little bit of uh, a little bit of that grapple. One one person had sent a picture and said, oh, it's hail. No, hail is associated with uh, strong thunderstorms. Sleet is what we may have had last night where it's frozen raindrops basically is the, the simple explanation for it. Up, uh, upstream for us in the next couple of days it looks very nice. So we're going to have a beautiful day today. Still going to be on the cold side. You still want to keep a coat handy later on today. We're going to be up to 55 degrees and then uh, tomorrow morning is going to be another warm morning, excuse me, another cold morning and then we warm up quite nicely. We'll be up to about 70 tomorrow warm over the weekend. Look at how the humidity comes back in here over the weekend and that's going to help out with cloud cover and that's going to help out with uh, maybe a couple of showers hours eh, late Sunday, perhaps on Monday, as well as going into Tuesday. But boy, the air we are in right now, it is a mass of cold air covering a good chunk of the country, except for the extreme uh, southeastern portion of the country. So cold out there, bundle up this morning. No problems, though, as far as any sort of uh, wintry precipitation. We're going to make it up to 50 degrees today at noon. Plenty of sunshine out there. And then later on this afternoon, up to 55. So about 10 degrees below normal. Nice afternoon, though, with all that sunshine. And then tomorrow, it's going to be cold again. 35 degrees here in town. Then we'll double that, make it up to 70 in the afternoon. Tomorrow's probably going to be the pretty. Well, this afternoon is going to be pretty, but combination of temperature and Sunshine tomorrow's going to be a good looking day and then 44 starting off Saturday morning. A uh, few more clouds on Saturday. Good looking day though. A shower is possible late Sunday. Another cold front's going to come through Monday. I'm thinking it's going to be uh, warmer in the morning, cooler in the afternoon, kind of cool Tuesday and then right back. Not as strong of a cold front and then right back to the mid 60s by Wednesday and perhaps another front by late next week. You know what I'm really happy about? We're about a week away from the typical end of the mountain cedar season, a typical year. Yeah, usually mid-February. Yes, we'll see if this is typical. Yesterday, yesterday's reading was on the high side. We'll see what happens I feel it. when it comes out right. this morning. So. I feel it too. Right. We got something all of a sudden. 33 degrees. Hollywood is already rolling out the red carpet ahead of the Oscars this weekend. We have a preview of what movies could be surprise winners. The red carpet is ready for Hollywood's biggest night. The Oscars red carpet officially rolled out Wednesday, covering the asphalt on Hollywood Boulevard in front of the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles. Crews are putting the finishing touches on scaffolding and bleachers, and producers announced the final batch of presenters, which will include nominee Tom Hanks, former host Chris Rock, and Killing Eve star Sandra Oh. And remember, no host for Sunday's show. Hey, Jojo, my old friend. One of the movies that could surprise people with some wins Sunday is Jojo Rabbit. It's up for six Oscars, including Best Filmed, and while it's not the front runner, it could be a spoiler in some categories. Taika Waititi directed the World War II dramedy, and he also plays Hitler. And he tells us he wanted to tell this story because there are startling statistics when it comes to young people's knowledge about the Holocaust. It's extremely important to keep telling these stories so we'd never forget what happened and uh, can prevent it from happening again. The Oscars air live Sunday night on ABC. Justin Bieber setting records on YouTube, more than 50 million subscribers for his artist channel, the first music star to cross that threshold. And episode one of his YouTube docuseries Seasons had the biggest audience of any YouTube show ever, more than 32 million viewers week one. Got a whale of a tale to tell you lad. And the world today remembering legendary actor Kirk Douglas, who died Wednesday. His son, actor Michael Douglas, called his dad an actor from the golden age of movies, who lived well into his golden years, 
also saying he was a great humanitarian and family man. Kirk Douglas was 103. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Absolute Hollywood icon. Oh, yes. Yeah, such a talented man. 457, 32 degrees. Still ahead, scams involving the coronavirus are starting to make their way into your email and social media. We have what you need to be looking out for. Are you ready to go into space? SpaceX will now let you book a rocket launch online. We'll tell you how much it could set you back. Coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And breaking overnight, San Antonio police say a sleeping man was shot multiple times early this morning. Sarah Costa has the latest coming up in a live report. More on an arrest involving a carjacking that happened near I-35 in Riddiman, what police say happened. And we had some wintry weather around here in the overnight hours, so things are starting to clear a bit. What does the rest of your forecast hold? Mike Osterhage is standing by. Bundle up, Buttercup. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is February 6th. And it is really cold out there. If you can, allow yourself extra time to warm the car up because you're going to need to. Mike? Why does it seem like February is the month that has all the, the weird weather? I know a couple of years ago we had that, that two inches of snow in December, but it's well, always February. Yeah. You're right. I mean, because in the 15 plus years we've all been doing the morning show together, it seems like we have an ice storm yeah. sometime in February. Or wintry precipitation mm -hmm. like we had last night. Yes, there was a little bit of snow. There was this one little little bit of energy that moved across the area. And obviously that combined with the cold air. And that's why there was a little snow or some uh, some sleet, some grapple around there. It's all gone. Uh, sorry. Yes, you will have school today. Don't worry about that. And uh, mostly clear skies as of right now. And that's allowed temperatures to really drop down. So like Mar Mark said bundle up buttercup and because it's cold out there 32 degrees out at the airport right now a lot of mid 20s in portions of the hill country and then we've got wind chills to deal with because there's still a breeze out there wind chills in the uh, low 20s and even out in the hill country it feels like 16 degrees in lost maples right now just let that kind of soak in. 23 as the wind chill ran off 27 up the road in Bulbury. So needless to say, just bundle up. Now we're going to have a lot of sunshine today and it's still going to be kind of cold though. 55 degrees. So it's one of those where, yeah, this coat's going to be a pretty good idea, especially if you get in the shadows. And uh, wind is out of the uh, north to northwest right now, about 5, 10 miles per hour. Wind's not going to be a huge deal, but with Temperatures on the cool side. Any breeze is going to make it a lot feel a lot cooler than that. Mountain Cedar really went up yesterday. It's going to be interesting to see after the breezy conditions yesterday what that does later on this morning. Of course, we're going to be getting the updated count about uh, 7 o'clock this morning. So cold, very cold this morning. Sunny, beautiful, chilly later on this afternoon. And it's going to be another cold one tonight. So if you're going to the rodeo perhaps tonight, uh, it's going to be make sure you do button up because it's going to be cold again this evening. Very cold start tomorrow. We're going to be right around mid 30s, maybe not quite as cold as it is right now. And then and even warmer in the afternoon, up close to 70. And then the weekend, great looking Saturday. A couple more clouds later on Sunday, perhaps a shower late Sunday. Not a great chance of it, but a very nice looking weekend once again. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Salise. Anything going on, Nick? Not much, Mike. The roadways are looking very calm right now, which is good for everyone. Um, not no accidents, but still be very cautious when driving out there. Never know if you could hit a spot of ice or something, so please still be very cautious. All right, we got some drive times. If you're on 151 to 1604 to 90, 10 minutes. And if you're eastbound on Highway 90 to 1604 to I-35, 11 minutes. Great times. All right. Taking a look at the trans guy, 281 at the quarry. Traffic looks very light. 10 in Hebner. Things are looking very good there. And let's see what else we have here. 10 in Callahan. Very light traffic right now. So if you are on the way to work, look for a smooth commute. Well, Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Breaking overnight, San Antonio police looking for a shooter after a man was shot several times while sleeping in his bed. It happened at a northeast side apartment complex in the 11,000 block of Roselle Street. That's near Wurzbach Parkway and Perrin Vital. Our Sarah Costa is live at the scene with more on our top story. Sarah, what can you tell us about the investigation so far? Well, we were able to move closer to the scene so we can actually see that shot up window. I'm going to get out of the shot here so you can see. So what you're looking at right now behind that crime scene tape is that window. You see that window unit will 
right above it where they have lifted the window screen was the room where that man was sleeping, where he was shot several times through that window. You can see all of the markers on the grounds for the shell casings. I just spoke with police. They say they believe about seven to eight gunshots were fired through that window where that man was asleep. To give you a better idea of where we are, these apartments are part of Saha, they're part of Saha housing. They are called the Elsie Rutledge apartments. What we know so far is that police were called out just before three this morning when a suspect fired those several shots into that window that you're looking at. The victim was asleep in bed, woke up to getting shot several times. The victim is a man. We're not sure it is of his age at this time, but he was taken to Samsi in critical condition. As for who did this, that's what police are trying to figure out this morning. The suspect did did run away. They are using neighbors cameras for evidence and they're reviewing that video surveillance to find out any more information on who possibly is responsible for this shooting. Live from the Northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the latest on a carjacking that happened last night here in San Antonio. Police have arrested two people after someone stole a car with a two year old child inside. Happened near 35 in Ritterman last night while the child's relative went into a gas station. They say when the relative went outside after paying uh, for gas, the car and the child were both gone. You just take your baby with you. I know it's a hard job, but moms just take keep your baby with you at all times, at all times, because you just never know. Officers and family members searched the area for about 45 minutes and found the car in front of a nearby restaurant with the child still inside. Police say they detained two people who were parked across the street at a motel. In your morning headlines, we will finally hear what President Donald Trump has to say about his acquittal on the impeachment charges in the Senate. The Senate did vote to acquit yesterday with Utah Republican Mitt Romney breaking ranks and voting guilty on the abuse of power charge. President Trump says he will make a statement today at noon. Also happening today, the House will vote on a resolution to disapprove of the Trump administration's new Medicaid block uh, grant plan. The plan would let states apply for a waiver to reduce Medicaid spending by converting part of the funding into a block grant. The resolution is not likely to be taken up in the Republican-controlled Senate. 507 back here at home, finally here, opening day for the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Yeehaw, it's a volunteer organization. The primary focus is using agriculture and education to develop the youth of Texas, and more than $210 million have been donated to the youth for scholarships. That's right, Alicia Bedetta, live at the Swine Barn. Alicia, we're here. A man Some kids woke up real early and uh, are ready to win. Alicia? Yes, they are ready to compete. Uh, let me show you. So we're about to go where they're going to um, bathe them, and that's the whole point, getting them nice and pretty uh, for the judges. So I'm not wearing the appropriate pants. Stephen, can we show them? So we've got to tuck these in right here because what we're about to step in is not, not too pretty. But Lexi woke up early this morning. Let's take a look at who she has over here with her. Um, let's take over here. Lexi, um, what grade are you in? So we'll have you turn around this way, Lexi. So she woke up. How early did you wake up this morning? Um, four. Four a.m. So she's still kind of sleepy. What's going to be the process right now for your pig? What's his or her name? Oreo. Oreo. Mm -hmm. Very fitting. And what's going to be the process here now? Um, sweat her down, shampoo her, brush her out. So one of the things that I learned last year is to get the shiny of the shampoo. Um, you're probably going to say no, but I'll ask, what's the secret for you? Um, I use the bright lights. The bright lights? Mm -hmm. Very nice. That way the reflection looks nice and pretty. Yes. And about how much does Oreo weigh? Um, at least one, uh, 230 right now. So if you were to win this scholarship money, where do you plan on going? What do you plan to do? What do you um, I want to go to New Mexico State or Texas Tech. Um, to the vet program. That's awesome. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks for talking to us this morning. And Oreo, Oreo looks like he's ready. Mark and Leslie, so this is what it's all about. Um, this morning, the teens waking up early, very, very early. Uh, we talked to Caleb earlier this morning. He woke up at 2 a.m. So, Lexi, he beat you, but 4 a.m. is still a very um, early wake-up call. We'll send it back to you. And again, we'll be live all morning long here on GMSA, giving you a closer look of what you can expect this year at the same time. They say we're wide awake. Yeah. And they're annoying. Yeah. Or you're driving it.
have a very precocious <laughs> porker there, Alicia. <laughs> Okay. Well, it's cold water. The cold water. Uh, that, or waiting for for breakfast, right? Oh, there's that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, you don't need an alarm clock anymore. Mm -mm. Thanks, no. Alicia. 509, 32 degrees. Still ahead for years, the Swiss watch industry has been the top provider of watches worldwide, but now it appears Apple is taking over. And next, officials warning about scams involving the coronavirus popping up in your email. We'll tell you what to be on the lookout for. And live cam giving us a look outside. Very cold start to your day at 32 degrees, but we are in for another fabulous weekend weather-wise. Mike has details. Welcome back, everybody. It's 513. In your morning consumer headlines, cyber criminals are using the global coronavirus scare to try to steal your personal data. Experts say hackers are using the outbreak as bait to launch phishing scams and deliver malicious spam and malware. The Better Business Bureau says this may include posts promoting awareness and prevention tips and fake information about cases in your neighborhood. Getting in and out of 7-Eleven convenience stores could get more convenient if new checkout technology takes off. The company says it's testing tech that would take cashiers out of the picture entirely. <coughs> right now, the test store is available to employees at the headquarters in Irving. To make a purchase, they download an app and check in at the store. When they're done shopping, they simply walk out, and the app debits your bank account and sends you the receipt. 514, 32 degrees. Still ahead, we're getting our first look at a brand new movie starring the popular Minions characters. Plus, SpaceX is offering the opportunity for you to book a flight into space, uh, but it will set you back pretty penny. We'll tell you how much. Mom? Yes. You stop. <laughs> We started fostering Kyle when he was six years old. I knew that routine was important for him. Dad, your turn. We started going to Chick-fil-A every Saturday. Every Saturday. <laughs> now, Miss Elizabeth. When your adoption day came, we got the honor of being in the courtroom with you. The judge actually called us out, too, for being a little too loud. <laughs> Having a big crowd cheering him on was really special to us. <laughs> Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. Fights. Oh, no, 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 no. Sore throat, fever, cough, sinus pressure, chest congestion, sinus head injury, measles and body pain, all in one. Did you really need the caps lock? Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. How do I even begin to tell you how you're my rock, my diamond? For the diamond in your life, there's only one diamond store. It's the Valentine's Day sale. Get 25% off everything, including these special deals. At sales, the diamond store. Good morning, 517. Time for best of behind the kitchen door. San Antonio food establishments with perfect scores of 100. Carolina is the Mexican food in the 11,000 block of Highway 281 South. We also have Maria's Pizza at 3529 Oak Gate Drive. Popeye, 17,000 Bull Verde Road. Moving along, congratulations to Taco Bell, 319 Valley High Drive. And finally, we have Two Brothers Barbecue, 12,000 block of West Avenue. Congratulations to everybody on their perfect scores. You have one, send it to me, bkd at ksat.com. We have more perfect scores coming up in our 6 o'clock hour. Leslie? Thank you very much. Well, there are signs the consumer genetic testing market is on the decline. Kenneth Moten and Janae Norman have the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's tech price, a slowdown in the consumer DNA market. Ancestry, the largest seller of home genetic tests, is laying off 6% of its employees. The CEO cited a slowdown in demand. It comes after the second largest DNA testing company, 23andMe, laid off 14% of its staff. The top watchmaking country in the world is no match for Apple. Apple is now selling more of its watches than the entire nation of Switzerland, which dominates the world watch industry. Experts say the smartwatch features are drawing younger consumers away from traditional Swiss timepieces. And SpaceX has officially launched an online booking tool. You reserve space on the rocket for $1 million. For now, it's mostly for companies launching satellites, but SpaceX hopes to use it for space tourism in the future. Beam me up. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. There's still a fee for check on and carry on. <laughs> uh, you, all, all your bags. But still a bag. a your check. traffic report, free. It is free at last check. Here's Officer Nick Solis with the latest.
Thanks, Mark. Well, we are having a relatively slow traffic morning, which is good news for everyone. Uh, things are looking very, very good on the roadways this morning. Drive times 1604 eastbound from Holotus to Randolph, 26 minutes and back westbound 27 minutes. So good times right there. Taking a look outside at Transguide 10 and Frio inbounds and outbounds. That was looking good. 10 and loop 1604 looking even better there. Very light traffic. We have 1604 Calibre and Alma Ranch. That 151 flyover starting to back up a little bit and uh, 30 and Ben's Engelman is looking very good with very light traffic right now. Thank you, Nick. Mike, you think in your lifetime you'll get one of those SpaceX trips under your belt? No, unfortunately. No. no. It'd be cool. It'd be great. Definitely I on the bucket list. I just would not right? want to do that. If you, if you all want to start pooling your money right now. And we can do a crowdfund for you. Buying that for me for my Let's birthday. Let's start a crowdfund. Okay. Campaign for Mike to go to space. Okay, we can do that. Let's, that? Send, him to, cool. let's, let's send Mike to space. <laughs> let's turn Mike into a real space cadet. <laughs> a lot of people are going, does the rocket have to come back? <laughs> uh, hey, we saw a little bit of uh, snow around the area last night. Some uh, Maybe some sleet, some uh, grapple mixed in, something like that. And on some of the elevated surfaces, yeah, it stuck around for a little bit over there in Converse. Kind of a neat picture, a rarity around here. The uh, sort of the, the gee whiz up around Austin. Yes, they did set a record, a trace of snow. They never had snow uh, yesterday on the, the 5th of today's. A, today's a, yeah, today's the 6th. It is. Yesterday was fifth. Yeah, that's all right. All day. Okay, thank you very much. I was just getting my dates all squared around here. So uh, the moon has set. It's almost full. It was beautiful. And then on the flip side of things, sunrise is going to be fantastic later on today. We've got mostly clear skies right now. So yes, we had the, the gee whiz last night with some of that uh, wintry stuff that fell and didn't do anything. So there's no, there were a couple of slick spots being reported uh, north of Austin earlier this morning. So if you're heading up I-35, uh, perhaps a little bit problem there, but nothing in and around town. No problems at all from that uh, snow we had last night. 28 right now, Bandera, 24 lost Maples and uh, 32 at the airport. So we have hit freezing. So that's the first time we've hit freezing so far in 2020, officially out there at the airport. Of course, we didn't hit it at all in the month of January. And then we got the wind chills to deal with. I mean, 24 at the airport, 30 Bernie, 16 is what it feels like right now in lost Maples. Uh, much of the area is at or below freezing and we'll probably get there before the morning is out. We do have a little bit of a breeze. Obviously, that's why we have some of these wind chills to deal with. But in a lot of spots, the air is calm. And so then you get the perfect radiational cooling where you've got the clear skies, very dry air and light wind. And because cold air is much more dense and heavy than than warm air is. And so it sinks down to the surface. So when you don't have any uh, wind to deal with, it really kind of just lays there. And that's why you get some of those colder temperatures now. We have a lot of clear skies aloft in the atmosphere, a lot of dry air aloft in the atmosphere. As this loops back in time, there's the clouds uh, that we had and then Boy, we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today. Here's uh, the satellite picture over the past 12 hours, and you can see that last little disturbance that formed up out there to the west. And then late in the afternoon, as it worked its way across the area, just enough cold air, just enough going on in the atmosphere to give us some of that um, snow, sleet, and grapple mixed together. And it was a, it was a, kind of fun to see. Today, though, we're going to be seeing nothing but sunshine, basically. 50 degrees at noon, sunny skies, winds out of the north to northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So not overly breezy, but enough with these cool temperatures. Just to add that little kind of zing to things. 55 degrees for a high temperature today with plenty of sunshine out there. Now it's going to cool off very quickly again tonight. So if you are heading off to the opening night of the rodeo, yeah, make sure you bundle up and then tomorrow morning is going to be another cold one down to 35 here in town. We'll double that up to 70 huge warm up tomorrow and Saturday chilly morning, not quite as cold and then nice big warm up throughout the afternoon up to uh, 70 a couple more clouds, especially late Saturday, Sunday, a shower is possible late Monday. It looks like another front's going to move on through th through here. So I think temperatures will drop during the day. Stay cool Tuesday, warm right back up on Wednesday and a couple of showers to start off next week. I love another mixed bag. Kind of sort of. Yeah, thanks. 524 32 degrees up next. The new movie starring the beloved minions characters is set to hit theater soon. Today in entertainment news, a brand new movie in the Despicable Me franchise. You don't want to cross me. <laughs> Come back when you've done something evil to impress me. He took a stone. Yeah. There's that little thief. 
I love the widow minions. And if you've ever wondered how big screen supervillain Gru got his start, Minions The Rise of Gru has the answer. Universal just released the first full trailer for the animated prequel, which bursts into theaters July the 3rd. Oh, we have Rise of Skywalker, and now we have The Rise of Gru. Gru. 527, 32 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour. We got a little snow here, but people in other parts of the state and country are dealing with real winter weather warnings. Bail bond companies can be the ticket to freedom for people who have been arrested. We take a look at the work that they do while you are sleeping. You're waking up to a Thursday morning. It is February 6th. And are we sure we're in San Antonio? After the snow and stuff that we saw last night. We had some wild weather around here. We're going to talk more about Fabulous. that in a, in a minute. Because as you wake up, you may see some leftovers on the patio or on, on your the truck car. Or car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might. Uh, but we're officially at freezing right now, 32. Yes. So we'll get to that in just a minute. How are the roads looking? Well, Leslie, the traffic is looking great right now. It's almost as smooth as my bald head. That's how <laughs> good traffic is looking. So it's good news for everyone. Well, it could have been a mess out there, considering the weather yeah. conditions that were kind of in the area. But we've not had no reports of major mm. issues at all. No, not at all. I, w I was a little worried because, like Mike said earlier, elevated surfaces could have some ice. Right. But no, nothing yet. So still be careful. The timing was pretty good for us. Yeah, because most all temperatures last night were still uh, above freezing here mm -hmm. at the surface. Now, some of the, you know, in your car or something like that, it, it lasted for a little bit, but uh, you know, it, it did come at a perfect time. Now the skies have cleared out, we have now hit freezing, so we're not going to have to worry about anything like that. Um, just cold temperatures bundle up because we're, like as you mentioned, at freezing right now. That doesn't tell the whole story because there's still a breeze out there. So we've got wind chills down in the mid to lower 20s and even some teens in parts of the hill country it's this cold. morning. Yeah, it's very cold. Beautiful day today. Lots of sunshine, 55 high temperature, about 10 degrees below normal. And then another cold night tonight. Take a look outside with live cam right now. And earlier this morning, we saw the almost full moon and it's set. So we've got nothing out there, but like I said, clear skies, and that's allowing these temperatures to drop down. 27 Bandera Comfort, uh, 31 at Randolph, freezing in Floresville, even down around Pleasant, 26 degrees right now. Then you got the wind chills. 24 out there at the airport and 16 in Lost Maples. 19 is what the wind chill is right now in Hondo. We have a bit of a breeze out there. It's not much, but obviously just enough to uh, really add that little bite to some of these cold temperatures. And as far as the allergens, Mountain Cedar really shot up yesterday. And it's going to be interesting to see what it is this morning, given the fact we had those windy conditions throughout most of the day yesterday. Mold should be dropping down, given the fact that we do have some drier air in place. Like I said, another cold morning tomorrow, but then huge warm up and we're going to be very warm. Good looking weekend overall, maybe not perfect, but we'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So. Smooth as your, uh, your noggin, huh? <laughs> yeah, Mike, it is. Traffic's looking great out there. Well, first off, everyone's having a great Thursday morning. But yes, right now, no major accidents. Nothing's happening. Roadways are very calm. So if you are if you are on the way to work, expect a very smooth commute because things are looking great out there. Let's take a look outside at the Trans Guy. 10 in Callahan, good. 10 in Frio, looking even better. Traffic's great there. Let's see, we have 10 in 1604 on the northwest side. Uh, very, very good. And one more. Let's 1604 Calabro Alamo Ranch is looking great as well. Well, I'll keep you updated on any accidents, but right now things are looking good. Mark Leslie, back to you. 533, thank you, Nick. Dust off your boots and cowboy hat. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The waiting is over. It kicks off today. The massive event draws about 2 million visitors every year, and there is something for everyone, including your little buckaroos. Alicia Beretta, all decked out, ready to go with the little buckaroo farm and the new act your family can enjoy. Alicia, tell us about it. Good morning. Well, it's with Dan Dan, the farmer man. We want to give them a big San Antonio welcome. Dan Dan, Hi. Scarecrow up there, welcome to San Antonio. Oh, thank you so much. Everyone has been so kind to us. We sure do appreciate it. And you're going to have major show times all day long. Y'all are going to be busy. Yes, Join we time. will. Uh, 1.30, 3.30, 5.30, and 7.30 here at the HEB Little Buckaroos Farm Building. Come on down and see us. You have to come down and see them. And we want to give you a preview of what you can expect today. Dan, Dan, the farm man, take it away. Okay, okay. A scarecrow, start up the machine. Why don't you? Check, Dan, Dan, Let's check. show up. Let's show up. This is our machine, everybody. It's a rain-making machine. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, that don't sound good. Uh, there is something going on. I'm going to tighten it. I'm going to tighten this, and uh, I'll tighten it. 
tighten over here. Oh, oops, too tight. Kind of like your hat. Oh, oh, I think there's something fishy over here. Fishy. Ah, 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 ah. It's just a fish joke for the halibut. No real porpoise. <laughs> hey, he's Scarecrow. What? You should try this. It's a lot of fun. Hey, you know where fish keep their money? Where? Riverbanks. <laughs> If you got any fish jokes, come on out and see me and let me know. Yeah! <laughs> It'll be fun! <laughs> The farmer man, yeah. over here. One more time, tell us the times that people can enjoy starting today. At 1 30, 3 30, 5 30, and 7 30. No fishy problems here, right? No, there's no fishy problems. No, no. Fun. Absolutely. Leslie, so, this is a little bit of what you can find here at the Little Bucket Roof Farms. It's going to be a good time. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks so much. You guys are great. <laughs> Bye. See y'all later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> They've got more energy than we do in the morning. Oh. With 10 thermoses of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Alicia. Also making news this morning, many of us saw a little bit of snow and maybe even some sleet overnight, something that we haven't seen in San Antonio for a while, so it was kind of fun. Well, meanwhile, folks around the country are dealing with true winter weather. We're talking watches, warnings, even some severe weather. And that's what tens of millions of people can expect over the next few days. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Toppled trees and damaged homes. That's among the wreckage after strong gusts of wind, hail, and rain tore through parts of Mississippi Wednesday. Heavy snow, meanwhile, falling in Texas and Oklahoma. While the precipitation caused havoc and headaches on the roadways... <laughs> Some were able to enjoy the snow. We're building a snowman, kind of, but we're more eating snow and doing snow angels. It's really, really pretty watching it come down uh, around the old buildings and uh, just old hometowny feeling. Buckets of snow also falling in parts of Indiana. I was out earlier and it is precarious driving. Uh, fortunately, I have the four wheel system on my car and that's big help. A storm system is organizing in the deep south and it's going to produce a number of weather hazards over the next few days. In the southeast and mid-Atlantic, a flood watch for 25 million people. Some areas could see more than half a foot in rain. As for the northeast, road crews are getting ready as more than a foot of snow is expected to fall. Stay off the roads as much as possible until we can get uh, material on the road, get the, the ice melted, because uh, no matter, even if you have foil drive, it's still not going to help if you're, if you're on a sheet of ice. I'm John Lawrence reporting. If you vape, you may have trouble finding certain flavored vaping cartridges in stores today. That's because the FDA's push to clear the market of many of these products is now in effect. Last month, the agency announced companies have to stop manufacturing, distributing, and selling most of the flavored cartridge-based e-cigarettes. Tobacco and menthol are the only two flavored cartridges still allowed in stores. Right now it's 538, still 32 degrees. Coming up next, the annual San Antonio Book Festival is just around the corner. We have more on what you can expect from this event that is free and open to the public. They can be a ticket out for people in times of trouble. And for folks at this bail bonds business, that call for help often comes in the middle of the night. How can I help you, sir? A man named Ace holds all the cards during the overnight hours at Easy Out Bail Bonds. At the family business steps from the Bear County Jail, yes, he helps people find eight. their way out of tough spots and often provides the money they need to get out from behind bars. This week's while you were sleeping, I'll tell you why he says his next client could be someone who you know. And outside with live cam, just now waking up, it's uh, definitely a bundle update, feeling very wintry out there. But we didn't see the snow they saw in some other parts of the country, but it's still kind of fun to watch. You're watching GMSA. Much more to come. Stick around. We'll be right back. Your time now is 541. Well, KSAC Community is highlighting an event that you will not want to miss. It's the San Antonio Book Festival. The free event will feature dozens of authors from all around the country and some from right here at home. The literary director for the Book Festival says they want to work to increase literacy in our city. It's a place for everyone to enjoy and learn about new ideas. 
We have writers who are picture book writers for very young children, and then a lot of writers um, who write adult books. So we really, um, we have a ton of variety of writers, and we have some of the best writers in the country. The event is completely free, open to the public. It will take place April 4th at the Central Library and Southwest School of Art. Thursday morning time check, 542, still 32 degrees. Coming up next, a closer look at the work bail bonds companies do while you are sleeping. Look at that little face. I mean, <laughs> just, it, no, don't hide. We want to see you. <laughs> We're going to see more of her. There we go, coming up after the break. Good morning, San Antonio. Off camera, she was just like looking around. As soon as we started <laughs> recording, she's like slinking down and all that <sighs> stuff. It's Beth's fault. So she, <laughs> it's camera nerves. <laughs> it's, or Beth's fault. One right. Uh, who's this little baby? Um, this is Polly. She is a little uh, two month old terrier mix who lives at our Paul Jolly Center. Um, and she is just super cute and cuddly and very, very ready to snuggle up in someone's home. And just those little ears that flop forward and that, that little face. <laughs> She's just, just hanging kind of, out. Yeah, she just, kind of, just kind of looks, kind of, kind of a serious look yeah. on her face. So. Oh. Oh my God. She's not going to be the biggest dog in the world and, and just a perfect little cuddler. Nice short coat, easy to take care She's of. She's very, very sweet. Yeah. What you got going on? <laughs> um, yeah, so as spring is coming, it's right around the corner. We are bracing ourselves for all the babies. We are about to mm -hmm. get so many babies um, as all of the stray animals in the city make babies. So um, one of the big needs that we have is for foster. Uh, we have all that coming right around the corner and sometimes those babies are the hardest ones to place just because they are a lot of work they take a lot of time um, so for anybody who maybe works from home or is retired or anything like that that has the time to help us take care of some of those babies that would be incredibly helpful to us well, hi sweetie yeah and sometimes the little baby bottle feeders you know you're up in the middle yeah of the night it's a lot like of that. work and it just it really helps them out so much kids can get uh, volunteer hours for it as well yeah yep it's a, it's a really great way to kind of teach kids what all that takes, what goes into rescuing a baby animal. Um, and you can fill out the application for that on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you'd like more information about that and this little baby look at her. She's just kind of kicking back there. Yeah, and just head on over to 1130 Nacogdoches or, as Beth mentioned, the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. That's a sweet puppy. Well, they are great friends to have in a time of trouble, but also the kind you hope you never, ever have to call on. Bail bonds companies can be the ticket to freedom for people who have been arrested. As Katrina Weber shows us, they often have to answer those calls for help in the middle of the night while you're sleeping. DJ Bail Bonds. It's well after most people's regular business hours. Still, this man makes it his business to be here anytime he's needed. I work 4 to midnight. I'm physically in this building. After midnight, I transfer the phone to my cell phone. Hello? All night long, he helps callers to easy out bail bonds. People caught in a tough spot without the money to get out of it. We take the risk and we are promising the system that person will show up in the courtroom all the way till case closing. The man known as Ace says he's learned the cards in life can shuffle quickly. Any one of us can be part of this system. Doctors, general managers, teachers, preachers. As a trained engineer himself, he never expected to work in bail bonds. But more than two decades ago, he took a job with the company, just steps from the Bear County Jail, owned by his brother-in-law and sister. July 23rd, 1994. Some 18,000 clients later, they're still going strong. While a big part of their job is to help people get out of jail while they're awaiting trial, they also spend some time educating people, helping them to avoid going back in. All around the office are sage words of advice. Ace also has a few of his own. Be careful in your relationships. It's just split seconds of going the right way or the wrong way. And when people go wrong in the middle of the night. How can I help you, sir? Ace is always up for the challenge of helping. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It's about 10 till right now. Time to check the roadways once again. Nick, how's it looking out there? Things are still looking great. We did have one accident on the 
uh, eastbound lanes of 1604. However, it looks like, as if I studied it more, it looks like this accident is actually going to be on private property now. So things are still looking great out there. There. This is the accident I'm talking about. Eastbound North Loop 1604 West. Access Road at Hebner Road. Things are looking good there. It looks like that one's not going to affect traffic at all. Drive times. If you're on 1604 Eastbound from US 281 to I-35, 9 minutes. And if you're on 1604 Westbound from I-35 to US 281, 8 minutes. Good times. All right. Trans Guide. 410 in Fredericksburg. Looking great. 281 in Winding Way. Looking good. 10 at the Y. Traffic's definitely starting to pick up there a little bit. And uh, let's see what else we have here. 10 at Wurzbach on the uh, northwest side of town. Looking good. And 281 at the Quarry. Very, very light traffic in that area. Hey, Nick. Yes. How's your week been? It's been very good, Mark. Thank you for asking. Busy at work? Yeah, this week. Yes, I'm very busy, actually. Yeah, I just, you know. Been uh, just doing work and was happy to be here this morning. Keeping North Patrol going. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you, Nick. So, yes. cold, but we're going to have a beautiful weekend. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. We'll have a few more clouds, uh, I think, later on Sunday, perhaps a uh, shower late. But overall, the weekend's going to be very nice. Uh, it, <laughs> and it's going to warm up quite a bit because it is really cold this morning. Now, what you saw last night, uh, some folks did. And, Mark, you had the best description. That does look like, I think... Somebody's faking it, and that is Dippin' Dots. I Mother like Nature's Dippin' Dots. Oh, that's, Dippin Dots. that's vanilla flavor. Now, here's the catch. No flavor. Yeah. I'm not saying I tried it. I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> that is grapple, and that's one of the basically three different kinds of wintry precipitation that we can see snow or sleet, and sleet is, is just raindrops that fall down, and they have time to refreeze before they hit the ground, and then grapple is kind of the combination of the two of them. You get little snowflakes, and as they are falling, water, super cool water droplets that haven't turned in, haven't frozen or turned into snow, attached to those and freeze up and so you get it's kind of like mushy little little you know it's dipping dots basically out there and uh some folks had mentioned that they saw hail last night no that's uh that's a, a associated with thunderstorms that's when you get those frozen raindrops but associated with heavy thunderstorms so what if there's anything frozen out there it's uh it would be sleet and or that grappler or snow we've got clear skies right now and yeah it's cold out there 28 to lotus 29 real media to 27 in comfort and right at freezing at the airport so that's the first time we've hit freezing since going back to december around here and we've got some wind chill temperatures it's cold so button up, needless to say, and everybody, just about everybody is freezing right now around the area. Beeville is one of the warm spots. Beeville and Corpus Christi, though, at 40. So we are right now about 10 degrees below normal. We may drop down a couple of more notches. Where there is no wind to speak of, that's where we have some of the colder air because the colder air is heavier, and so it settles down to the surface instead of being kind of stirred up in the atmosphere with some of that wind. But no matter how you slice it, either it's cold or it's wind chill, it still feels really, really cold. We had a lot more moisture aloft in the atmosphere yesterday, of course, and then everything kind of swept on out of here. However, we did have that one batch, and, and what it was, of course, yesterday we started off with the rain, and we had some of that uh, wintry precipitation yesterday morning at this time out to the west. Then that last little bit of energy moved on through here, and it was just enough to squeeze out some of that, uh, that wintry stuff late last night. Did not last very long, of course, and the ground has been so warm previously the past few days, so nothing obviously stuck, but it was kind of neat to see. 50 today at noon, sunny skies, beautiful, beautiful day. It's going to be gorgeous out there, beautiful blue skies as well. 55 for high temperatures, so 10 degrees below normal. Coat handy all day long is a pretty good idea, and then it's going to cool off quickly tonight. So if you are going to the rodeo tonight, make sure you do take a coat with you because it's going to get cold as soon as that sun decides to uh, drop down in the sky. 35 tomorrow morning. So another very cold start, not quite as cold as this morning, and then pretty much will double that temperature throughout the day, make it up to 70. So tomorrow and Saturday are going to be probably the prettiest days, including temperature. Today's going to be gorgeous too, but um, nice in the afternoon. 71 on Sunday, a few more clouds on Sunday, and then basically cloudy skies, I think the first part of the week. We've got a bit of a front moving on through here, so that'll hold temperatures in the mid-50s. It looks like first of the week and then back up into the 60s by Wednesday and a couple of showers here and there. So our chance of dipping dots has moved on. Yes. Thank Thanks. you, Mike. 554, 32 degrees. Still ahead, if there's an In-N-Out Burger fan in your life, you might have the perfect Valentine's Day gift for them. We'll tell you about it. 
Now you don't have to just eat it in and out burger. You can wear it. The popular burger chain unveiled a pair of shoes on Instagram this week. The drink cup shoes are inspired by in and outs cup design. The slip-ons covered in red palm trees are available his, hers, and youth versions. They cost around $65 for the adult version and just under $40 for the kiddos. You can buy them at in and outs website while supplies last. Less than three minutes till six on your Thursday morning. A teenager in critical condition after he was shot while walking down the street. We will have the latest on the local investigation. Trans Guide, Nick's got an eye on things as we wait for that sun to come up on a very cold start to the day. You're watching GMSA. A man was asleep in his bed only to wake up to being shot several times through his bedroom window. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. What police are using to search for that suspect? Good morning, we're taking a step back in time and this morning on GMSA at six o'clock. Stick around because we're at the chuck wagon here. So breakfast tacos and some delicious coffee coming up. And we had an interesting night here in South Texas. Sleet, snow, weird white stuff, all sorts of craziness. Mike has your Thursday forecast coming up. Live from case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And if you blinked, you missed it. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is February 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Hopefully you were up late enough to see some of that snow and grapple and whatever sleep that came down. I was asleep and I woke up to video of it. Yeah, we both missed it last night. Mike, were you up or did you see the leftovers this morning? Just saw the pictures of it. Kind okay. of neat. You know, we, we were talking about neat. Yeah. But yes. no school delays, no, major no, 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 no. road issues to report anywhere in our region, right? Nope. It was uh, just because Sarah and uh, Spivey and I yesterday were talking about it, and it was just going to be this brief little, you know, bit of energy coming on through here, a little bit of snow or the, the grapple or something like that that, that moved on through. And temperatures, uh, even though it was chilly yesterday, the ground temperatures were very, very warm, and so anything that felt basically, you know, for the most part, melted on contact. And it was late last night. Now the skies have cleared on out, and we have got uh, gonna, going to have a good looking sunrise looking off to the east right there. Still at uh, freezing here in town. First time we've hit freezing since going back into December. Of course, we didn't hit it officially at the airport in January. 24 lost Maples, 35 Canyon Lake, 31 in New Braunfels, and 29 right now in Pleasanton. And then it's the wind chill. 23 is what it feels like right now. 16 lost Maples and 24 down the road at Stinson. Not much of a breeze, but when you have these colder temperatures, it doesn't take much at all. And mountain cedars on the high side. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when the uh, updated count comes out in about an hour. Mold should be dropping down, hopefully with the uh, drier air in place. Temperatures, I think we dropped down a couple of more notches this morning, and then we're going to have lots of sunshine throughout the day. It's going to be a good looking day, but it's going to be jacket and coat weather all day long. We'll make it up to about 50 today at noon and then continue and top out at 55. So about 10 degrees below normal, but again, a nice looking day. Now temperature is going to cool off very quickly again tonight. Night. Now the cold start tomorrow, but even warmer. Then we head into a, a nice, pleasant weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic and Officer Nick Solis, and it's been fairly quiet on the road so far this morning. And still the case? Yeah, we got one accident on uh, side streets, but on major highways, things are looking good, Mike. I I, I'm, I am surprised, I'll be honest. Coming in today, I thought I was going to have a little bit of a busier morning. Good news, I'm not. But we do have this accident here. Broadway and East Grayson Street. Looks like it's a, a disabled vehicle on the roadway. SAPD is on scene and hopefully they get that cleared up soon. But accident there. Taking a look at some drive times. If you're 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, it looks like it's 16 minutes. And if you're 35 southbound from Loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, so still very good drive times there. All right, trans guy, 35 and 37. Traffic starting to pick up a little bit. 281 at Sprucewood. Things look very light there. And uh, let's see what we have. 281 at Grayson, where that accident is. Um, things are looking good on the main highways. Uh, 410 at Austin Highway on the northeast side looking great as well. Well, I hope everyone's having a good morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Developing now, a bullet woke up one Northeast side teen this morning after someone shot right through his window. It happened at an apartment complex in the 11,300 block of Roselle Street. That's near Wurzbach Parkway and Perrin Beidel. Our Sarah Costa has been live at the complex all morning and has an update in the 6 o'clock hour. Sarah, do you have any new information about that victim yet? 
Yes, we just did it get it confirmed that that victim is actually a teenager, an 18 year old male who was asleep. Uh, you can actually see this window right behind me. Police have since cleared the scene, clearing the tape and wrapping up out here. But that window where you can see that window screen up earlier, you could see the bullet holes through it about seven to eight bullet holes through that window. And that's where that 18 year old male was sleeping when someone shot through that window where we are to give you a better idea. These apartments are, are Saha apartments called the LC Rutledge apartments. What we know so far is police were called out just before three this morning when a suspect fired several shots into that apartment window. The 18 year old was asleep in his bed only to be woken up by getting shot several times. That 18 year old was taken to Sam C in critical condition. I did ask police before they leave, left if they knew had an update on his condition. They said they didn't at this time. As for the suspect, the suspect fled. Police are still trying to gather evidence um, to figure out exactly who this possibly could have been. They are using some of the neighbors cameras, video surveillance to see who that suspect possibly could have been. Any clues in that video surveillance live from the northeast side. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a teenage boy is in critical condition after he was shot while walking down the street. Police say the boy was walking with several other people in the 300 block of Burns Drive around 10 o'clock last night, which is near Van Diver and Riddiman. A police sergeant says a car drove by. Someone inside shot into the crowd, hitting the teen. Officers are still looking for suspects. Now to the latest on a carjacking near 35 in Riddiman last night. Police have arrested two people in connection to the taking of a vehicle with a two year old inside. Police said the child's mother went inside a gas station to pay for gas, but when she came out, her car and the child were gone. Officers and family members searched the area for about 45 minutes and found the car in front of a nearby restaurant with the child still inside. Drove around and, and was able to find the car and the baby was still in the car. Thank God the baby was still in the car. Grandmother wants others to learn from this mistake. Keep your baby with you at all times because she says you just never know what could happen. She says she's grateful the baby was found safe. Man accused of sexually assaulting a seven year old boy in a San Antonio movie theater restroom comes to face to face with the child's father. That was the scene in court yesterday. Christopher Branham pleaded no contest to the assault charge and was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Paul Venema has the story from the court. Prior to sentencing, the child's father, who we will not identify due to the sexual nature of the case, told how the attack has affected his son. He is definitely uh, an introvert now. Uh, he's uh, grades started to go away, uh, won't do anything by himself anymore. It's affected our entire family. He explained that the family of seven was at the movies here, which at the time was the Rialto Theater on May 19th of 2018. His son returned from the restroom and told his mother of the attack. He is just a sexual predator, Your Honor. He has poor impulse control. He uses drugs, he uses alcohol. Ramsey noted that Branham was out on bond in a similar sexual assault case at the time. He asked the judge to sentence Branham to 35 years in prison, which the plea agreement called for. Branham's lawyer asked for probation. It's pretty clear that he is not someone who suffers from pedophilia, but lack of impulse control. We're asking this court to sentence him to probation, Your Honor. I'd just like to say I'm very sorry. Um, if I could take it back, I could. I would. From the judge, a quick reply. I see no reason to do anything other than order that you serve the 35 years. One more thing. Once he's released from prison, Brenham will have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. 6.08 on your Thursday morning, U.S. Senate resumes its normal proceedings today after voting to acquit President Donald Trump on both articles of impeachment Wednesday. But mixed reactions continue to come in this morning after Republican Senator and former presidential candidate Mitt Romney voted to convict the president for abuse of power. He was the only person to break ranks with his party during the trial. What he did was not perfect. No, it was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security, and our fundamental values.
President Donald Trump is expected to address the impeachment trial outcome later today. Be sure to follow KSAT and KSAT.com for the latest updates. And your morning headlines, the House of Representatives will vote today on a resolution to disapprove of the Trump administration's new Medicaid block grant plan. The plan would let states apply for a waiver to reduce Medicaid spending by converting part of the funding into a block grant. The resolution is not likely to be taken up in the Republican-controlled Senate. Two more planes with evacuated Americans from China where the coronavirus started are expected to arrive at military bases today. One of those right here at home, JBSA Lackland. All passengers will be quarantined for 14 days. There are at least a dozen confirmed cases in the U.S. The death toll in China has risen to 563. To hear the detailed plan, San Antonio health officials laid out for housing quarantine travelers potentially exposed to the virus, head over to KSAT.com. It's exactly 10 minutes past the hour, 32 degrees. A few of our favorite things are coming together. We're going to tell you how to get your hands on the Spurs and Selena goods. And let's rodeo San Antonio. Today is the start of the annual stock show and rodeo. Alicia Barrera will join us live. Show us how all the preparations are coming together on opening day. It is literally freezing cold outside. You need that heavy coat today, especially for the kiddos heading to the bus stop. 32 degrees on your Thursday morning. Six thirteen. it's time. Let's rodeo San Antonio. That's right. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo opens this morning, celebrating agriculture, music, and Texas tradition. Alicia Beretta having herself an old school breakfast over at the Chuck Wagon. Howdy, Alicia. Howdy. Howdy. Howdy, partner. Well, you know, one of the big things, uh, Texas traditions, the foods, you guys, and here in San Antonio, it's Tex-Mex food. So I'm over here joined by Mr. Buck himself with the Chuck Wagon this morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Staying warm? Doing great. Yeah, oh yeah. It's just toasty out here. It's toasty. He's from North Texas, so he has an advantage. <laughs> All right, so today you've been uh, hard at work. You yep. woke up early, and what do we what do we have on the menu? We're going to have some breakfast tacos this morning. And with... already we have some ingredients that yep. we need. Yeah, we put a little, little, need a little hot sauce on there just to keep uh, everything even. And then in here we have? A pot of cowboy coffee. Oh my goodness, you guys. Let me say, I tried it and it's so good. And now the food. We've yep. got to, we got to have Trigger, food. bring it on over. Trigger's going to come over here with that plate of food, you guys. And this is one of my favorite things of the rodeo. And it, it's special to be here. And that's because to be here, step foot in here, you have to have a pretty big group. Oh, yeah. 15. 15 minimum. We've had groups up to 500. You guys, Mark Leslie, this looks amazing. All right, Mr. Buck. You want to make just, you one? Yes, please, because I have a glove in one hand and the microphone in the other, so it's a little hard. Oh, my gosh. And this is here, potato, egg? This is actually a pot uh, egg, chorizo, oh, and some goodness. onion. Oh, there we go. We have to have that hot sauce. In Make cases our noses aren't running already, <laughs> this will help. And we have been feeling those temperatures just drop a little bit this morning, but it's worth it when we have um, some breakfast tacos and that cowboy coffee over here. Um, you guys, there's a lot to do here at the rodeo. For me, this is one of my favorites. Thank you so much, Buck. You are welcome. Oh, so, all right. We'll send it back to you guys. Uh, don't so again, just to be over here, a, a big group, right? Yeah, minimum 15. Maybe we need to get a group together at KSAC and head over here, Mark and Leslie. What do y'all uh, well, think? Don't, don't be afraid to bring some back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll try, and if not, I'm going to have this taco and... I'm sorry, you guys. You're going to have to make it out earlier over here and deal with the cold because it's it's been tough for me, at least. Back to you. Let's two rodeo. Words, and two let's words, eat. Alicia. Uber Eats. We're going to make this happen. Thanks, Alicia. Ooh, Ooh yeah. it looks good, doesn't it? Sure it does. My mouth is watering right no. now. We were just saying, I guess because it's so cold outside, we all want warm food. Yeah. Uh, let's check on the roadway, so find out if there are any problems. Yeah, no, Leslie, right now we do have one, another accident that just came out at Valley High Drive. Let's take a look at that one here. It looks like it was a one vehicle accident. However, in this accident, it looks like the vehicle leaked some gasoline on the access road of 410. SAPD has been there for about 15 minutes now, and it seems like it's getting cleared up. I don't expect it to cause any delays as we head into rush hour. Still working on this accident, Broadway at East Grayson Street. Be careful when heading over there. Let's take a look outside now at the trans guy, 410 at 
and Austin Hive was looking good. 10 at the Y looking great uh, there. Traffic starting to pick up. 10 at the rim. Also, traffic starting to get a little bit more moderate in that area. And uh, 281 at the quarry definitely getting picked up there. So just be careful. You know, it, it, there could be some small pockets of, of ice on the roadway. Just use caution. Drive a little bit slower than usual. And uh, please be very careful on the way to work today. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. From the looks of social media this morning, many of you uh, spent your evening doing this. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And this. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I it was woke up to seven videos from my family. From Did your you? family alone. Yeah, from my family mm -hmm. alone. Anything left over on the patio furniture? No, uh, I didn't see anything this morning. Yes, but most, I have great video to look at. Yeah, most all temperatures uh, last night were still uh, above freezing. We just dipped below freezing uh, here at the airport um, about an hour or so ago, um, and you know it was one of those little anomalies, if you will, as somebody posted that you were looking at it, the, they survived the blizzard of 2020. The blizzard of 2020. They got this, snow in Austin, didn't they? Yeah, a, a, a bit, quite a, a bit. Trace. A trace of snow. A trace. But so, a measurable amount. Well, technically it's not measurable. Uh-huh. But it did set a record for a trace of snow. Okay, and there and there's those dipping dots again. There's yeah, somebody spilled dipping dots uh, around the area, and that, that's grapple, which is uh, you take a snowflake and then little the droplets of water freeze to it, so it's kind of a mushy little like dipping dots and uh, a little bit on the ground there but uh, you know it's kind of neat to see nice and lot novelty we do have clear skies we can see a couple of stars out there this morning it's going to be a beautiful sunrise and uh, with the clear skies the light wind and very dry air that has allowed temperatures to drop down so yes as i mentioned we were freezing out there at the airport first time since back in uh, december that we hit freezing lost maples 24 31 port sa and 30 uh, up the road at Bulverde and wind chill temperatures it's cold out there, and that's why that uh, big black iron skillet that Alicia was standing around looks so nice and warm with those breakfast tacos in it. Nice warm breakfast, good idea this morning. Northwesterly wind at 12 miles per hour, and then a lot of areas don't have much of a breeze at all, and so that's what's allowing temperatures to uh, drop down. Now, as far as dew points, obviously the air is very, very dry out there right now, and it's going to stay that way tomorrow, so it's going to be another cold morning. But then the humidity really starts to come back into the picture over the weekend. So by Sunday and Monday, I mean, we've got a ton of humidity out there. Very, very mild temperatures and we'll have more clouds, even a couple of uh, some rain chances around here. Obviously, very cold air has covering most of the country. So we are on the almost the leading edge of that. And it's just down to 18 up the road in Oklahoma City, Wichita at 19. And as far as what's going on in the upper level steering winds, this is why we got this nice blast of cold air. We've got this big, big trough around here. And then what gave us the, the little bit of snow, there was a, just a little disturbance that slid up here from the southwest. Just left enough leftover moisture, I should say, and those cold temperatures, and that's what squeezed out some of that snow and the, the grapple and everything. And just kind of a fun little, you know, makes for good video and good pictures. Now, we get milder over the weekend as the upper level wind lines move kind of west to east, so that puts us back closer to normal temperatures or even a little bit above that. And then a system is digging out there to the west. However, there's going to be a very shallow weak front that moves on through here Monday. It's actually going to knock temperatures down for uh, throughout the day on Monday and a little bit on Tuesday. Not anything huge blast of cold air, but uh, just gets us from the uh, 70s down to about the, the 50s, mid 50s or so. And that'll only last a couple of days. 50 today at noon. Beautiful day, but it's going to be cold and a high of only 55. So if you are heading out to the rodeo later on this afternoon and this evening, make sure you do take a coke because it's going to cool off very quickly tonight. 35 starting off tomorrow morning. So another below normal morning and not quite as cold as where we are as of right now. And then 70 for a high temperature tomorrow. So great looking. Saturday is going to be a nice day as well. We'll have some more clouds late in the day on Saturday. Sunday, more clouds and uh, Maybe a sprinkle late, a couple of showers here and there, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, especially Wednesday, and I think a little bit cooler temperatures by Monday, Tuesday. Okay, thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now, 621, still 32 degrees. It's been one week since an Idaho mother missed a deadline to prove her children are safe. Now, new surveillance video is raising questions about her behavior around the time they disappeared. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. 
Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema, or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, where are the children? Can you tell me where your kids are? Where are your kids? It's been one week since Lori Vallow ignored a deadline to physically produce her children, failing to bring 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old JJ to authorities. Ever since she's been involved in this doomsday uh, cult, that is not the same Lori that we knew for 13 years. Vallow's oldest son, Colby, still pleading with his mom for answers about his siblings. I feel like my mom would die for the kids. So to see this and hear it and also be questioning why they're not being found, that's where all this comes into like a battle between what you think and what you feel. So could the couple be arrested? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Pick a cuisine. We've got you covered today in Best of Behind the Kitchen Door. This is perfect restaurant scores from recent health inspections here in San Antonio. We begin with La Salsa's Mexican restaurant at 2018 San Pedro Avenue. Moving along, we also have Pasha, 9339 Wurzbach Road. Congratulations on your perfect score. Main Street Pizza and Pasta, 1906 North Main Avenue. Also, Alamo Smart Barbecue, 358 East Craig Place. And finally, we have on our list Sushi Zushi. 18,720 Stone Oak Parkway there on the north side. Congratulations to all on your hardworking and perfect scores. If your establishment got one, send me an email, bkd at ksat.com. We hope to have more perfect scores coming up next Thursday right here on GMSA. Les? Thank you. Well, turning right now on ksat.com, you can snag some free food or items taking your herd to the rodeo. Ten shows inside the AT&T Center are eligible for a special offer, and anyone with a valid military ID can get into the rodeo fairgrounds for free any day. However, the promotion does not extend to admission into the daily AT&T Center shows. And it is two of the Alamo City's favorites, the Spurs and Selena. You can put in your pre-sale order for the crossover merchandise right now. The items include a shirt featuring both Selena and the Spurs logo and a matching tumbler. And then you can attend Selena Night at the AT&T Center on April 3rd against the Golden State Warriors. To see both of these stories, just go to KSET.com. Right now, it is 627, 32 degrees. Here's liquids coming up. There could be a ticket out for people in times of trouble. And for folks with this bail bonds business, that call for help often comes in the middle of the night. How can I help you, sir? A man named Ace holds all the cards during the overnight hours at Easy Out Bail Bonds. At the family business steps from the Bear County Jail, yes, he helps people the find their way out of tough spots and often provides the money they need to get out from behind bars. This week's while you were sleeping, I'll tell you why he says his next client could be someone who you know. New this morning, police are searching for the person responsible for shooting through a bedroom window at a man while he was asleep. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. The evidence that police say that shooter left behind. What well, doesn't happen all the time, but we had some wild winter weather around here last night, but you would never know it this morning looking at the beginnings of your sunrise, but you do need to grab a coat. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, February 6th. Yeah, you need gloves, you need a coat, you need a scarf. It's really cold. All of it this morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. scarves are definitely need. Nick is here. 
We've had zero problems to report so far this morning out there, especially due to the wintry weather. It was more of a gee whiz thing. Yeah, well, we just had our first major accident. Uh, okay. accidents. Yeah, it looks like 37 and 35 is backed up right now very bad. We have, a, we have some trans guy footage of it. It's not looking good. Uh -oh. Okay, we'll get updated on that. We kind of got lucky with that, you know, that little wintry mix, but then it moved out before right. rush hour. Yeah, had it happened, you know, at this time, we could have made the roads kind of damp, but it was last night and all that's gone. Sky's cleared out and everything is uh, pretty much evaporated. And and yeah, we've got a great sunrise in store, but we've been talking about uh, gloves, hat, coat, warm. Very cold outside. Very warm breakfast this morning, 30 degrees, and that's where we're going to be in the next couple of uh, hours. And wind chill temperatures, though, that's what's really going to get you. 55 for a high today. It's going to be a good looking day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then tomorrow, another cold start, but even warmer. And ooh, get ready for that sunrise. Got a couple of clouds off in the distance, way off to the east, as you can see there, right along the horizon. But already starting to see the glow of the uh, impending sunrise. 32 out at the airport. First time we've hit freezing since back in December. 30 Balverde, 24 Lost Maples, 29 in Divine, and these wind chill temperatures. Oh, it's just cold thinking about it. How cold it is out there this morning. Button up, and wind is. Uh, not uh, not overly strong, but with these cold temperatures, it doesn't take much to uh, knock those wind chill temperatures down. Mountain cedars on the high side. That was yesterday's count. Be interesting what uh, happens when the updated reading comes out in about a half hour, 45 minutes. Mold should be dropping down as well. Another cold start tomorrow morning, and then we get up to about 70. Good looking weekend. Maybe some more clouds late in the weekend, but overall very nice. We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now, and it's been a fairly Quiet morning up to this point, but you said right here in downtown is that big one, right? You see it right there, that red mic. 35 and 37 right now is a little bit of a mess. We have this three vehicle major accident on the main lanes of 37 southbound. It looks like two vehicles are disabled in the number two lane, and another one is off to the shoulder. It is causing major backup on that 35, um, 35 south 237. Uh, let's take a look at that accident. Here it is there. Um, it's a uh, SAPD is on scene. They've been there for about 20 minutes now. Hopefully they are uh, going to get that cleared up soon, but no guarantees there. I wanted to show you another shot, though. Uh, bear with me here. There's another shot of the traffic back up on 35 and 37. Um, here it is. So you see all that there. That's that looks like that's 35 merging onto 37 South. So expect a delay or find an alternate route because that's going to be a that's going to cause a lot of backup here in the next 30 minutes. Well, I hope uh, we can get it uh, done fast. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Let's get back to a developing story we've been tracking this morning here on GMSA. A sleeping teenager shot right through his bedroom window early this morning. It happened at some apartments on the northeast side on Roselle near Wurzbach Parkway in Parambital. Sarah Costa live at the scene with the latest. Sarah? Good morning and the scene now is clear and it's quiet, but that wasn't the case for the last two hours. Police were out here when they got called out just before three this morning to a 18 year old boy being shot while he was asleep in his bed through his window. That's actually the window that we're looking at right behind us where that 18 year old was sleeping. To give you an idea of where we are, these apartments are Saha apartments called LC Rutledge apartments right off of Roselle Street near Warsbach Parkway and Perrin Vital. What we know so far, police were called out just before three this morning when a suspect fired several shots into that apartment window. The victim was in a, was in bed asleep when woke up when he woke up to getting shot several times. Police say anywhere from seven to eight bullets were fired through that window. The victim, like we said, an 18 year old man was taken to SAMC in critical condition. As for who did this, police are still searching for the suspect. The suspect fled. However, police say they are using neighbors cameras and looking through that video surveillance to see if there's any clues of who pulled the trigger. Live from the Northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. President Donald Trump will address the nation later today after he was acquitted in his impeachment trial. But his victory had an unexpected turn when Republican Senator Mitt Romney broke party ranks and voted to remove the president from office. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. The president won. The office of the president won. The Constitution won. The deeply divisive trial to remove the president from office ends in acquittal. We always knew it was an uphill fight. 
No one had illusions that the president would be convicted. President Trump and his team coming out on top, but Trump was tripped up on his way to triumph. Mr. Romney. Guilty. Mr. Romney, guilty. A historic vote from Republican Senator Mitt Romney, now becoming the first senator in U.S. history to vote in favor of removing a president from his own party. What he did was not perfect. No, it was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security, and our fundamental values. In an emotional speech, Romney saying his faith guided his decision and he believed the evidence was clear. Trump pressured Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden for political gain. The blowback, swift and relentless. The president's son even calling for Romney to be expelled from the party. He's not brave. He's a coward. The president ripping Romney on Twitter into the night. Had failed presidential candidate Mitt Romney devoted the same energy and anger to defeating a faltering Barack Obama as he sanctimoniously does to me, he could have won the election. And across the nation, Don't Trump! Don't Trump! small but vocal protests popping up from coast to coast. And the Romney response aside, the president is expected to make an official statement about impeachment sometime this afternoon. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Meanwhile, the primary election season continues. ABC moderating Friday's debate in New Hampshire. You can watch it live at 7 o'clock in the evening, tomorrow evening, right here on KSAT. And if you want to catch up on all things about the election, go to ksat.com slash vote 2020. Our new page is up and running and has everything you need to know about local, state, and national elections. We believe in planning ahead here on GMSA. Now to a KSAT community event you don't want to miss, the San Antonio Book Festival. It's coming up April 4th. The lineup of authors for this year's book festival were announced yesterday. Writers from across the nation and here at home, all a part of the, all part of the festival. Totally free and open to the public. This festival is a gift to the city. Um, and it's a chance for everybody to learn about new ideas and um, hear some of this country's best writers talk about what they're thinking about. And that could be fiction, novels, or hard-hitting political books. The festival is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. April 4th at the Central Library and Southwest School of Art. Well, it seems like we've been talking about it for weeks now. The San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo has finally arrived. And, of course, it is one of the biggest events in the Alamo City, drawing about 2 million visitors every year. Alicia Badetta is live at the rodeo grounds. And you warned us that when people show up, they're going to notice a major change. A major change. Well, let me tell you, when they show up, it's not going to look like this. Obviously, the lights are going to be on and everything. But the biggest change, for years we've seen the carnival um, on the Houston Street. Well, this year, there's a big change. They've changed it on the opposite side of the rodeo ground. So this is right off of AT&T Center Parkway. And that's because things are getting bigger and better this year. We're going to hop on the golf cart and give you a view of also what we're seeing right now. So everything, Alan here has been up with us very early helping us. Thank you, Alan. Um, so the big reason why they made that change for the carnival, again, things are getting bigger and better. They have a total of 60 rides now, 12 new ones. So it's gonna be a good time. Hopefully later on we can actually get on one of those rides, one of the new ones and see what it's all about. But right now what you're seeing um, ahead of us here, people already lining up for those funnel cakes, the biscuits and gravy. Um, and these are most of the uh, parents of uh, the kids who are at the swine barn. Um, another cool thing that's happening this year, a very new future is gonna be that's happening February 16th, and it's going to be a charriada. So what is that? That's actually what they call like the grandfather of the rodeo. Um, it's a Mexican tradition started in Jalisco in Mexico. And it's all about the technique of the horse, the agility of the horse. That's happening February 16th, so mark it down on your calendars. So right now, everything is calm, you guys. You who saw us earlier this morning, we were in the swine bar. Kids getting up as early as 2 a.m., some staying over here overnight just to make sure that their animals are okay and ready to shine and win that scholarship money that they need. The chuck wagon, that was great. And I think one of the coolest things, Mark and Leslie, uh, was being able to go to the little buckaroo farm over there uh, with the kids, something that you can take with your whole family. There are uh, jokes for the adults too, obviously everything G-rated, but this rodeo season, it's going to be great. Everything is bigger and better, and I'm sure everyone is going to have a blast. Mark Leslie, do you all plan to make it out maybe tonight for opening night? Cody Johnson's in town. Well, we heard. I yeah. heard. I 
Yeah, we're definitely going to make it out to the rodeo. Yeah. Probably not opening night, though. Uh, here, here. Hey, Alicia, we've enjoyed the rodeo ride along. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. She's had to bundle up out there this oh, yeah. morning. Very cold. 641, 32 degrees. It feels like a Friday, but it's Thursday. Well, when you're in trouble, it may be hard to find a friendly face in the middle of the night. We're going to take a look at a bail bond business after the break that works while you were sleeping. He's out bail bonds. It's well after most people's regular business hours. Still, this man makes it his business to be here anytime he's needed. I work 4 to midnight. I'm physically in this building. After midnight, I transfer the phone to my cell phone. Hello? All night long, he helps callers to easy out bail bonds. People caught in a tough spot without the money to get out of it. We take the risk and we are promising the system that person will show up in the courtroom all the way till case closing. The man known as Ace says he's learned the cards in life can shuffle quickly. Any one of us can be part of this system. Doctors, general managers, teachers, preachers. As a trained engineer himself, he never expected to work in bail bonds. But more than two decades ago, he took a job with the company, just steps from the Bear County Jail, owned by his brother-in-law and sister. July 23rd, 1994. Some 18,000 clients later, they're still going strong. While a big part of their job is to help people get out of jail while they're awaiting trial, they also spend some time educating people, helping them to avoid going back in. All around the office are sage words of advice. Ace also has a few of his own. Be careful in your relationships. It's just split seconds of going the right way or the wrong way. And when people go wrong in the middle of the night. How can I help you, sir? Ace is always up for the challenge of helping. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Let's check on the morning commute. It is 647. Nick, I know we've had some problems. Yeah, we have another one, Leslie. Well, good morning, everyone. We have two major accidents that just came out in the last 25 minutes or so. This accident here, uh, northbound Highway 16, just south of 410. It's a two vehicle major accident right there on the northbound lanes. Expect a delay if you're heading that direction. Still working on this accident, southbound I-37 at McCullough Avenue. It's right before that 3537 interchange. It is causing quite a bit of traffic buildup on that 35 south southbound ramp to 37. Let's take a look at it here. There it is. Now uh, for some alternate routes, if you are heading on 35 southbound, you're trying to get to 37 to get to East Commerce. Well, if you're on 35, why don't you exit uh, South New Braunfels, take it all the way down to East Commerce and save you some time instead of staying here in this traffic. Another look at that accident. SAPD is still on scene. Expect a delay, folks. If you're heading that way, it looks like those main lanes are still blocked. Mike, how's that weather? Cold out there. Of course, last night we did have a little bit of uh, some snow, some grapple, and yeah, if you were standing out there, that's what it looked like. It was a, kind of a nice little gee whiz thing. All that's uh, gone, and now we've got just a glorious start to the day. A couple of leftover clouds off in the distance, but wow, it is beautiful out there, and it is cold. Those clear skies, we didn't have any blanket on top of us overnight, so it's down to 32 in town, 28 Bandera, 24 Lost Maples, 27 in Helotus, and Randolph, you're at 30 right now. Same thing with Stinson, and then you factor in the wind. There's a little bit of a breeze out there, and it feels like 23 at the airport, 16 in Lost Maples, and 20 right now is the wind chill in Honda. Wind is out of the north and northwest at about uh, 5, 10 miles per hour on average. And we've got very, very nice uh, clear skies out there, obviously, a couple of leftover clouds. The uh, little bit of a disturbance that moved through late yesterday, and that's what it was just enough with just enough leftover moisture, cold enough temperatures aloft. And so that's why we did get some of that uh, wintry kind of precipitation. Dry air obviously has moved in here, and that's why we got such cold temperatures or what's helping out one of the ingredients. But over the weekend, humidity is really going to start to come back into the picture, and that's going to be an increase in clouds, especially on Sunday. Maybe a couple of uh, little sprinkly showers around here. As of right now, cold air is covering a good chunk of the country. You know, we're in the same air mass, and look at that colder than what it is in Cutbank, Montana, as of right now, which is a little bit of an anomaly. 
And here's the uh, reason for it. This big dip in the jet stream, the upper level steering winds allowed that very cold air to come down in here. And then that just goes away, sticks around today. Uh, start cold start tomorrow, but then we get back to basically normal temperatures with this almost zonal pattern going into Saturday and then to help the humidity come back in. We get in the southwesterly flow, although there will be a little bit of a uh, front that tries to scoot through here Monday and that's going to trim temperatures off briefly for Monday and Tuesday. And with that southwesterly flow and everything, we have little disturbances moving through. So that's why we'll have a couple of showers starting off. It looks like next week 50 today at noon. Just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day with those blue skies out there. But yeah, it's going to be jacket weather all day long. 55 for a high temperature, about 10 below normal going out tonight. Rodeo opens uh, later on today. Take a coat. It's going to be cold. And then tomorrow, very cold starting off, but we get up to 70 in the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine. Nice looking day on Saturday. More clouds Sunday. Maybe a little sprinkly shower late and a couple of showers are possible starting off the uh, the first part of next week. And I think it's going to be a bit cooler Monday and Tuesday. All right. Thanks, Mike. Ten till 32 degrees. Although the weather is cold today, crawfish season is off to a hot start. Join us tomorrow on GMSA for Flavor Faves. Eric Hernandez will highlight a classic Southern fair. The news you need to know before you go is coming up and another look at time saver traffic uh, with Officer Nick Solis from the San Antonio Police Department. Thursday morning sunrise is looking fabulous. San Antonio Spurs continue their rodeo road trip tonight, this time heading up to Portland, Oregon. Silver and Black will take over, a uh, look rather, to overtake the Trailblazers in the Western Conference standings with a win tonight. Late game on the West Coast, tip-off scheduled for 9 o'clock San Antonio time. That means you can join us tomorrow on GMSA for highlights and reaction. All right, we have been talking about the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo all morning and coming up today on GMSA at 9. We're taking a deeper look into this massive event and what makes it so special. From how the rodeo started to some of the changes you need to know about before you go, and there are quite a few. We'll cover it all in our special Rodeo Super Block. That's today at 9 after Good Morning America. Time to check the roadways once again. Nick? Yeah, just working on those two accidents I just uh, talked about here. Northbound uh, Highway 16 at Mission Gate and this one southbound I-37 at McCullough. Expect a delay in both cases. If you are in that area, SAPD still working on those scenes. Let's take a live look here. 37th and 9th Street, not looking too good on that accident. And uh, here's another look at that. Look at all that backup. So expect a delay if you're heading that way. What a mess. Oh, take a look at the uh, sunrise this morning. Absolutely spectacular. A couple of uh, little leftover clouds off to the uh, east and temperatures. We've actually dropped down another degree. So now to 31. This is the coldest we've been since way back on the 19th of December and 24 lost maples. However, there's still a breeze out there. So 16 is what it feels like in lost maples right now. 25 is the wind chill in Balverde. Beautiful day today, but still cold. 50 at noon, 55 for a high temperature. Cold start again tomorrow and then up to 70. Saturday looks like a good day as well. Cold, nice big warm up. More clouds Sunday and a few more clouds starting off next week. A couple of uh, sprinkly showers, maybe a bit cooler Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, it's Monday, Tuesday look kind of rainy, yeah, cold. Yeah, mm. yeah kind of, yeah, so. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great day. Good Morning America is next. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 7. 9.